Nation. You're listening to Mortgage Gumbo with Dwayne Stein right here on iHeartRadio. And I'm your host, Dwayne Stein, the Gulf South Mortgage Authority. we got a great show planned for you today. Joining us is Total Home Authority member and fan favorite, the queen of insurance, Colette Biedenkopf. Lord knows we got a heck of a lot going on with insurance. So who better to get in studio than the queen herself to give us an update? Hey, they had a big announcement this week with insurance. So we're going to get her take on that and see what the heck is going on there. Um, Lots going on. So, you know, hey, if you've got insurance questions, you want to know what's going on, what's up. Hey, why in the heck is my premiums going up? Uh, my mortgage statement, I, got, I just got my mortgage statement, and um, I'm getting absolutely, my, my note went way up. You know, if those are the type of questions you got, hey, now this is the hour for you. Uh, this is Mortgage Gumbo. If this is your first time to the show, welcome. Welcome to the Gumbo Nation. Uh, this is your home show. For eight and a half years, we have been providing education and options to homeowners just like you. So we appreciate the Gumbo Nation continues to grow. So as we move forward, as we continue, uh, we are going to educate you on everything going on. So, um, hey, Colette, did you, uh, well, well, we'll do our official welcome in a little bit, but uh, did you go to the parades or do anything? Are you a big parade uh, goer? I am. Um, but I, the older I get, the more particular I am on weather. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> wind, it, it, including five plus mile an hour winds. Cold, yeah. wet is not my jam. Right. I mm-hmm. agree. Yeah, I agree there. Uh, likewise here. You know, and went out last night, checked out the crew of Eve. That was cool. The weather uh, held off for them. Uh, but more importantly, more importantly... Uh, tonight, float 26 on Captain Charlie's Bayou Charters float. Mad Hatters. In Metri? In Metri. Mm-hmm. Uh, mortgage Gumbo. Me and the G Unit. Um, we'll be riding. Uh, do they still call it Sidewalk Side? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's the other side they changed, right? That used to be Neutral Ground. Now it's called something else. I still call it Neutral yeah, Ground. Yeah, me too. So, um, uh, so when we're looking at this... Uh, that is going to be where um, uh, what it, what we're going to be looking at in regards to um, tonight. Float 26 on the sidewalk side. So we are going to have a lot going on. We're excited about that. And we are going to... Um, hold on one second, folks. you got to love live radio. Watch this. We're going to mic check real quick. Hold on, everybody. They probably can't even hear me right now, huh, Dave? Dwayne's uh, having yeah. some technical issues with his microphone, yeah. and we yeah. all want to hear what he has to say, so we have to give him just a few seconds you know, to get himself plugged in again. Heaven forbid. He's saying heaven forbid. All right, what about now, Dave? Music and entertain ourselves. How are you today, Colette? I'm doing pretty good. Good. All right, hey, what about now? Can you hear him now? What about now, brother Dave? Dave? Hello, hello? You have cut all communications. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. You, sound, you, you still sound far away. Me? Right. I do, or he does? No, he does. You sound fine. All okay. Right. Well, that's good. What about now? Any better? Nope. No? Awesome. Are we on a commercial break? We can take a break if you like. I'm just you know what? Yeah, let's go to a break, and then let me uh, see what's going on here. And we'll get this uh, fixed up for you. We'll be right back. You're listening to Mortgage Gumbo with Dwayne Stein on iHeartRadio. All right, Dave. Let's see what's up. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like it's like it's only picking you up on a different microphone. Huh? It's only picking you up on like a different microphone. Like yeah. like it sounds like you're talking across from Colette. All right. Uh, what about now? Better? Not really. I mean, hmm. I can hear you. Hmm. 
Is your microphone on? Is it plugged in? I mean, we got all kinds of stuff I'm wondering what, yeah, like that pop we heard. I'm wondering if, if it's like underneath the, 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 the setup. Test, test, like, well, I'm just, all right, hold on. What about now? Wait, say again, get close. Test, test, test. No. Test, test. Unless your mic is real, real low. What's your level at? No. Testing. Oh, hold on. Might want to plug it into the right fucking mic. What about now, better? A a little bit, yeah, yeah. You're right on it. Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, there we go. All right, fuck. I mean, heck. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's been good. It was a good run. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. We appreciate being on Mortgage Company. <coughs> thank you for making my time here so special. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Facebook. I appreciate that. Glad it sounded good there. Um, all right. There we go. All right, we're good. All right, we got one minute. You got to love live radio, right, Facebook? Isn't that awesome? I mean, who wants to make things easier? Hey, if it was easy, everyone would I mean, be who wants that? Stupid. Who in the world would ever want that? Yeah, much better. All right. All right, what's happening? Gumbo Nation, all the folks streaming, we got a ton of people. Hey, you're getting to see behind the scenes when things get effed up, uh, what happens. So we had to go to a commercial break there. So you're just getting to see behind the scenes what goes on when uh, equipment don't do what it's supposed to do. Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or user error. Mm. All right, welcome back. Sorry if we uh, we lost you there. Yeah, let's play some Mardi Gras music. That'll help out. Uh, welcome back. This is Mortgage Gumbo with Dwayne Stein right here on iHeartRadio. Sorry about that. Uh, Radio Nation, Gumbo Nation. Uh, we had a little faux pas here uh, with me, not with iHeart. So uh, we got that corrected. So we are back. So anyway, listen, it's Mardi Gras season. People are out there. Uh and float 26 tonight to Captain Charter, uh, Captain Charlie Thomason's Bayou Charters, uh, float is going to be, uh, float 26, sidewalk side. I don't think that is offensive yet. Uh, that, that parades haven't, floats haven't gone woke yet, right? So we can say, uh, sidewalk side. Uh, in Metri, float 26. Me and Gavin will be the last two riders. So hey, reach out. Hit us with a dad cam uh, so we can get you some throws and goodies. And hopefully this weather uh, this weather here will uh, cooperate Cooperate for us. Thank you, Queen. You're always uh, just right there. So um, <laughs> so joining us in studio in her, her segment, uh, she's already filling in, doing fill-in. Uh, you know, what is going on <clears throat> with my insurance? What is going on? There it is. Look, how could you not? I mean, it's her music. She requires it. She will not walk into my office. Uh, during the week, she will. But for the for the show, she requires this. Uh, I had to stop. Try to find rose petals on a uh, Saturday morning. But <laughs> we got it. We had horse child for her carriage and chariot or whatever they're called. So, uh, so excited to have the queen here. So, queen, you were saying... Not a big, uh, as you have uh, matured, not aged, as you've gotten... uh, Wiser. Yeah, wiser. Let's talk about that. Yeah, not as um, spry uh, in calendar years. Uh, You sort of um, pick and choose your battles when it comes to Mardi Gras, how much you love it or like it. Yeah, I, I reserve all of my energy at this age for 
the weekend of Mardi, the weekend before Mardi Gras. Okay. Um. I, so I'm 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 just storing yeah. my energy right now. Yeah. Because because come Thursday, muses, I'm pretty much it's on. It's on all the way to Mardi Gras. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. So you just. I'm conserving my energy. I like that. That's 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 a that's a. Uh, it's wisdom. It's wisdom. It is wisdom, and that's a good thing. So went out last night to the uh, Mandeville parade. It was nice. The weather held off, so good for them. Uh, so much, uh, so much going on. So excited um, with Mardi Gras, especially being able to ride tonight. Baseball season starting up, so good stuff there. So now on the real estate side, hey, I mean, if you want to talk to me personally that's fine we could start a personal podcast me and colette and just get into uh some other thoughts uh on the mortgage side listen uh straight up we told you last saturday the fed spoke and this was a not gonna lie not gonna uh sugarcoat it it was an absolutely horrible week uh when it comes to just information coming out the incorrect information information overload uh but you know, I, I put out a newsletter yesterday that went out uh, in addition to the route to a lot of the real estate professionals, and, and basically the title was uh, Rates Play Chicken with the Fed and Loss. So, you know, there's a lot going on, and, and the Fed now is adjusting things, and, and it's hard to know what to believe and because, you know, is it politically driven? Is it correctly driven? So that report we talked about last week that came out discussing how all of a sudden – uh, jobs reports with one organization were a lot better than the other. And if you go back and listen to this past Saturday, Wednesday's Hump Day Holler, I break it down in detail of exactly what's going on and how it has really affected us in the last week. But we told you rates were going to be, uh, they were going to recede this year and it was going to be up and down because we know these kind of things happen, right? We deal with data. We deal with facts, not just headlines. But this is part of when you've got folks that are coming out saying certain things uh, that are going to happen, and all of a sudden, we and you, the consumer, has left holding the bag, so to speak. So we're going to talk about that. So mortgage rates this week uh, took a little bit of a spill. However, listen, here's what I want to tell you. There's a lot going on, and there's a lot of people coming out, and activity is increasing. Activity in the mortgage world is increasing. Refinances are up big time, over 20% in the last month and a half. So refis are up, which we told you, this is what happens, right? Hey, that two and a half sounded good on 15 years. Now you're spending, those credit card bills have gone up. That two and a half is a nice number, but now you're hemorrhaging in other parts. So we could talk about all that uh later what we're going to be discussing today and why you're tuning in total home authority member colette biedenkoff is in studio so on the other side of the break if you've got insurance questions you want to know why is your mortgage statement why is your premium going up why did all of a sudden uh i get a, uh my statement in the mail and my mortgage payment went up a couple hundred bucks right and then you call a lender and and you call me and i let you know it has nothing to do with us and couple weeks back, we kind of gave some tips, and we could talk about that as we go. But Colette Biedenkoff is in studio. The queen of insurance uh, is here. So if you've got any questions, 504-207. I'm sorry, 504-260-0995. We'll be right back. Yo. Yeah, bring bring your mic levels down a little bit. Colette's is perfect. Bring yours down. You're All right. Popping. Test, test. Uh, it's not popping right now. Test, test, so, test. Yeah. I, I, it's weird. I, since it's in queue, I can't get an right. accurate feel on it. All right. But, yeah, like, you're, you're, any anytime you talk like Dwayne, yeah. you know, it starts. <laughs> All right. Facebook, how's it sound? Uh, is the volume, everything okay on uh, Facebook? Just give me a thumbs up or a what's up. Got a ton of y'all out there. Appreciate y'all joining us uh, on the stream. A lot going on, so got to love technical errors. Would, would I, 
What's crazy is I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like You have a gremlin that comes in here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's gremlins, man. It's gremlins. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, it's every week. Like, I check this stuff. You know, I don't just walk in on Saturday morning and go, you know me, Colette. I'm pretty. You're prepared. Yeah, pretty detailed guy. And I'm like, okay, great. Perfect. Not working. Not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Gotta love it. Dude, we had like a great six-month run. Of, right. You know, that, that, that Comrex crapped out in the back. Yeah. It's just like everything decided, you know what, let's all just take a day. Yeah. What? Yeah. Perfect. Now we're playing catch-up. Love it. I love that. Thank you, Emil. Appreciate it. You know what's crazy is um, it it just, when it happens, I now have such doing this stuff. I now have such a larger uh, respect when you're watching, like, the news or ESPN. Like, because you know dudes are talking in their ear. You know? (laughs) But they also probably got somebody fixing their stuff. Like, I'm trying to talk, think about what I'm going to say, and I'm not always really scripted. Right. And it, and it throws me for a loop. But I guess, you know what? That's why the show's real, right? That's, what, that's why I people... tell you what happened to me, uh, shoot, two weeks ago. I was live, you know, doing my Sunday show, and I had, I had two guests in the studio, the R&O Talk studio, and I'm in the control room. And one of the guests kicked the power supply and turned off the power. So all of a sudden, they're all pointing at their ears, putting their hands in the air, saying they can't hear me. And I'm just like, well, this is the Week in Geek. We'll be right back. Right. <laughs> right. I'm like, what did you talk? Stop it. Right. And not to add the seat that I bought, the three hundred dollar chair to be comfortable. I pump it up with air, and it does this the whole time. That seat. Yeah. So about to go back to the old bar stool. Yeah, we're in Mardi Gras mode. What a great time, right? I mean, and, and finally things, no restrictions, so to speak. It's exciting. Listen. Get on out tonight to Metairie, float 26, sidewalk side, last two riders, Captain Charlie Thomason's Bayou Charters float. It's a big redfish, so you can't, I mean, it's just going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Hit me with a dad cam. We got some throws. Me and the G unit will be rocking and rolling and knocking that out, so uh, we'll be here to uh, hook you up. Hey, the home away from the show, snap, send, and save dad cam. Folks, it's free, no cost, no obligation. Just answers. Should I refinance? Like I said, refinances are up big time. Is it something I should be reviewing right now, Dwayne? Uh, purchases, right? If I'm ready to buy or am I not ready to buy? What do I need to do to be able to buy? So that is something that is that we've got that if you want snaps in, not if you want, when you're ready to find out that information, again, no cost, no obligation, snaps in and save dot com. Um, All right, let's welcome into the show. Cue her music, please. She's the queen uh, of insurance, the almighty. Um, I went to an event with her last Friday uh, to a group, and she's also known as the mama, something like that. I like queen better, Um, but I get what they were trying to do, but... um, She's ours. She's part of the Total Home Authority. And right now, more than ever, we need her. So she's taking time off of her busy day on her weekend to come out and let's discuss what the heck is going on, right? So I'm going to start off with just give us an idea of, And we'll get into details, but give us an idea of just 
the whys. What is happening with insurance in the state of Louisiana? Well, I wish I could sum it up in one sentence, uh, but there are so many um, factors that are playing into, uh, it's kind of like the perfect storm, if you will. Um, You have multiple, multiple severe weather events that occurred in a very short period of time. You have uh, inflationary issues with materials and labor. Right. Uh, You have a shortage of skilled uh, adjusters that are available when catastrophes occur. Uh, You have a reinsurance market, which is the insurance companies that insure the insurance companies um, that are not uh, making, you know, money. So they're charging more uh, to insure the insurance companies, and that cost is coming down the pike to the policyholders. All right, so let me stop you there Mm -hmm. because – I am assuming I know my audience pretty well, more than 12,000 of you each Saturday. Appreciate that uh, and growing. <clears throat> when you say they don't have enough money, I've, I've never met somebody that said, hey, they are, pretty much everybody says, I got enough insurance. So when you say an insurance company don't have enough money, explain, because you had to break this down for me, and that's why I'm asking for the art, because I thought, uh, they run a, a pee poor business, right? Mm-hmm. So explain why they don't have any money or why they, a lot of them ran out of money and had to get out of Dodge or went, solve it. You know, kind of explain that when we say don't have the money. Well, you mentioned uh, probably two years ago, you and I had this discussion yep. where um, you were like, I'm paying $2,000 for my premium. And, you know, where's that money going? And I said, well, Dwayne, look at the coverage amount you have on the policy. Your house is insured maybe 400000 You're paying $2,000 for it. So if your home is severely damaged in a storm, you might get paid $200,000 that you paid, let's say, five years. You paid ten grand. Right. Okay, for right. that policy, right? But they're paying you two hundred thousand, so the difference was in reserve. That's that's what the insurance companies talk about when they have uh, a ma- their capital in reserve, right? In reserve for catastrophes. Well, what happened to a lot of folks, um, meaning the carriers, from what I saw during the multiple storms that we had in sequence down here was um, they were insuring your home, let's just say at the time, 300,000 and they were pay, you were paying a premium based on that coverage. It was based on that coverage. Right. And what happened was after these catastrophes occurred and you had the spikes in construction and labor, and shortages in the whole nine yards that it now probably cost them double to fix your house than it did when you wrote the policy. Mm-hmm. So there's a there's a shortage of premium that should have been collected. Right. So you can't get mad basically when you call me and go, your premium went up, but... You were happy that for the last umpteen years you had a nice low premium, but right. now the fiddler came to collect, so to speak, and and it's because of the multiple storms. Like it, you said, we got is, hit by so much all at one time. Well, uh, the, the same companies, you have to understand, were writing coastal exposure, right. okay? Right. Then you had other companies that were in uh, the wildfire, okay, areas. So some of them were the same right? and some of them were different. But the majority is that the, the national insurance companies, the all states, the state farms, the liberties, Hartford, big names, 
they kind of left town right. after Katrina yeah. and haven't really come back saying we're going to take on wind exposure in the coastal areas. So the, the only players that came to the table were regional companies that were smaller, okay, and they didn't have as a robust, backing, let's say, reserve, backing, right? everything, okay, that your national companies do. But what that did allow us as Southeast Louisiana residents was to be able to have a very reasonable premium for our homeowner's insurance in the last 15 years. Right. And so what, what has happened is that we are playing catch-up. We're playing catch-up on the monies that were spent in the storms. We're playing catch-up with uh, reinsurance rates going, you know, astronomically high. And there's not enough players in the market to bring that those numbers back down yet. Yet, right. So that's something where, hey, we've just got to... We, live with, we live with the bear. hand we're dealt, dealt right now, right? Um, you know, you can't, there's no bluffing, there's nothing like that. You know, the, I think the biggest frustrating thing is, is with us, talk, like, it's, you know, it's not like it's a quick fix. You it know, we're, and we're going to talk about some things that, that kind of got passed this week. I think that's important. Um, but, you know, it, it's something, folks, that it's tough to digest because we pay all this money for insurance you know, in our minds, and then all of a sudden when, you know, we want to get our, and, and guess what, most of us, it's not that you're getting complaints about carriers not paying. They're paying. The problem is we've sort of done this to ourselves. I'll be quite honest with you. I think we've done this to ourselves, right? You hire the the roofer, you hire the, you, and then all of a sudden everybody starts, there's charges that get done, and think about this, maybe, oh, the roof hey i'm gonna tell the insurance company it costs this and then maybe everybody's excited when they put you know maybe you and the roof will work something out and you put five grand in your pocket right well now we're all paying for that we're all paying for oh yeah my boy's gonna make a claim and then hey hook me up with five eight well, grand on that i do want to discuss from my seat yep what i saw okay and what i see all right Hold that, because we're gonna we up against a break. Let's get to the break on the other side. Colette is gonna explain because nobody sees more claims, more policies. Heck, Colette's background used to be handling this stuff, so she's an expert in this field. Uh, you're listening to Mortgage Gumbo with Dwayne Steiner right here on iHeartRadio five zero four two six zero zero nine nine five. Yep. <clears throat> My son's taking his ACT right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, he does better than me. Mm-hmm. My, both my kids did way better than I did. Yeah. So. In fact, I think my son did better than my daughter. Really? Yeah. Which? Mm -hmm. Gavin's kind of like me. He's very smart. It's but to be four hours in a room in the same desk. No. It, it started to set in for me. Like I got to get, get out of here. here. Yeah, I got to get out of here. <laughs> so. I can't stay still that long. B C C. Exactly. Right. Lost focus. Yes. Totally lost focus. I'm just ready to get out. Yeah. I know. 
And, of course, I can imagine the excitement right now he has to be riding with his father on a float. I mean, that's – he actually is pretty excited about oh, it. Oh, no. That's – that He's is – excited. Is this his first time? No. He rode a couple years ago. Then last year he couldn't ride because we had a game. This year, luckily – 30 seconds. All right. Luckily, no game or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. um, so should be cool. I've been lucky, though. I rode in Damien, and I've rode Nis – pray two or three years and the weather's always been epic so this is going to be a little uh interesting yeah but i think tonight it's going to be clear i think it clears out yeah chilly but people can wear coats right Welcome back. You're listening to Mortgage Gumbo with Dwayne Stein right here on iHeartRadio. Hey, if you want to join the show, 504-260-0995, or you can shoot an email to info at mortgagegumbo.com. Tonight, Mad Hatter, sidewalk side, float number 26. Hit me with a dad cam. Me and Gavin will be out there rocking and rolling, having a good time riding uh, tonight. Home away from the show, folks. Mortgage Gumbo, dad cam, or snap, send, and save com or you could follow us gumbo nation on facebook or youtube just type in mortgage gumbo and subscribe there in studio total home authority member colette biedenkoff uh is in studio with us she is the queen of insurance so what we're talking about is hey what's going on with insurance so uh kind of tell us we, we we were talking about my question was hey what did they do where's all the money so great great job explaining that kind of tell me what you saw um on as you're processing these claims because i had kind of stated we've done this to ourselves with you know you get your boy to put the roof back on and he charges the insurance company this and now maybe you get a little bit on the back end well now we're all paying the price for that well there there is room for improvement for everyone right okay that's a good point yeah everybody has responsibility in this show that's good. So everybody was a little negligent, so to speak. Right? Everybody. Right. It was uh, the way the laws are written. It was uh, the way that the claims departments um, managed, handled, managed their staff, managed um, the phone lines, managed communication. All of that needs improvement. Um, on the flip side... The what what I found out through this process, and I'm talking about the processing of IDA claims, yeah. um, was that if you have a, a field adjuster, that's the guy that came out physically to look at your house, and there were things on the estimate that didn't make it, uh, there were damages that didn't make it onto the initial estimate, and it could be from a variety of reasons. Uh, the tree was still on the house when the adjuster got there. So how much is he going to be able to see or she? So once you start removing the trees and then there's a whole bunch of more damage that's uncovered. Okay. So what I've been hearing from the insurance company side is that there's some, uh, there were some mediators, some, you know, judges, some people in uh, higher positions that felt like the, they're going to penalize the insurance company and and add more money to the person's claim because that damage should have been on the first estimate. Right. Okay. That's a hard pill to swallow. Well, especially because what are we doing? We file on a claim. We want the injustice out there as quick as possible so we can get started. Exactly. Right? Kinda, exactly. I, but then I you're gonna be first on the list. Right. Then you're going to penalize them because they weren't able to see everything that was damaged the first time they went out. And the penalty is stiff. Okay. So if the claim, uh, the supplemental claim, let's just say, was forty grand. Okay. okay? Um. The insurance company's having to pay a penalty on top of the forty grand for not having the forty grand on the first estimate. Right. Okay. I mean, you. So can't, when you say penalize, meaning um, they get like ding the demerit. A monetary. Oh, real? Okay. So that's all on the back end, right? Correct. Okay, I did so, not realize that. Okay. Wow. okay. So 
the forty thousand dollar claim has now cost them sixty. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. And so, if I'm an insurance company, do I want to come do business down here? So let's talk about that. So that is why a lot of companies bolted. Right. They have both. Not only did a lot go out of business. I remember you spent pretty much all of last year as these people started to roll out. Y'all were burning the midnight oil on. I've been in catastrophe mode since I hit. Right. So reinsuring folks. But when you're reinsuring them, you have only a few options where to put them. Then this Louisiana who knew. Right. I mean, we knew it was out there. Now, all of a sudden. You know, we're counting on the insurance, so to speak, of last resort is our new bailout plan. Okay, so let me let me explain what the purpose okay. of LA citizens was before Ida right. versus I was, after. Was slash is now. Okay. We would go there for certain risks that other carriers said this is not in our appetite. We it's not in our wheelhouse. You know, things very close to the water Mm -hmm. and older, older structures, asbestos roofs, just certain items. Well, now they are actually the wind rider, okay, of all of these houses because their rates for wind are lower than the market. So it's not we're going there because we don't have a market. We're going there because it's a more many, competitive market. You're trying to say people. So let me ask you this, because I'm seeing more policies written. Now you got wind separate. Like it's no no longer just one policy. Homeowners insurance. No, we went to two policies now. R- right. With so wind. E- explain that, though. I okay. want people to understand because you go homeowners and then people. All right. Well, no, we got a, win, a separate policy. The best way I explain it to folks is I say this is your all peril policy for your homeowners it handles every claim except a wind related event anything to do with a wind related event is going to be through la citizens to adjust that claim but if you have a pipe burst in your house if you have a fire if your house gets struck by lightning all of those perils are still under one policy that was issued your personal liability is also on that policy so pretty much everything that you would typically have in one policy is just scooped out the wind and we place that with la citizens because these other folks are charging too much of a premium to have it all in one so to speak the rates so are just... higher mm-hmm. for wind with the open markets than they are with citizens all right so that that's a good question because i see it every day where when we're getting quotes, it's, all right, hey, we got a separate wind policy. I want, and a lot of people ask me, why is it that? Why is it not just homeowners, right? Because, you know, your bundle, so to speak, right? At the end of the day, I've yet to meet somebody where, uh, you know, loyalty's not to the pocketbook. So what you guys are doing uh, is going, hey, listen, let's figure it out and, Especially if you're escrow, no big deal. The check just goes to two people versus one. Correct. We're, it's not like your mortgage payment's going to be broken down in four different pieces. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. If you're escrowing, it's fine. The, the, that portion will go towards L.A. citizens for the win, and the rest will go to uh, wh- whoever the carrier is going to be. Um, <clears throat> so good there. Um and I want to save for the last segment everything that's that's going on um, with uh, the new stuff. So my next question would be, what advice would you have? Because I'm getting bombarded with calls every day because people's policies renew. Or the insurance company they were with is out. Oh, what, they're, yes. they're gone. They're, they're bailed. Yeah. So now, hey, you got to get reinsured. Yeah. What advice would you have <clears throat> for homeowners and i talked about this a couple weeks on a podcast i told people if you get a mortgage statement and it's way up first thing you do is before call me and i'll say hi and we can catch up but the first most important thing you need to be doing is call your insurance company yeah, right because your agent yes chances are that's, that's the reason okay it, that's the reason why it's going up and you know um we we are recognizing 
in our folks, you know, meaning our clients, yep. we know that they're all increasing. Um, so we are working feverishly, meaning once we get a copy of the renewal and see the severity of increases, right? Sometimes, guess what? You just need to grin and bear it because although it's way higher, it's lower than everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll tell you that. Then there's other folks that uh, UPC, which was one of our, a big company for us that we wrote business with for a long time, right. is no longer writing in the state. They're non-renewing all policies. All of them have to be written by May 31st. Okay. So we are working with those folks to determine where is the most competitive rate for them. And um, it's, it's, it's a tough discussion to have yeah. because it's not a few hundred. It's a few thousand. It's a few hundred a month. A month. On your, on and, your house And note. that's what I'm getting. And this yeah. is where I feel bad because, you know, uh, a lady uh, sent out this week and she's like, how are you supposed to budget? Like, the Prepare. budget was, right. you got me approved for this. And then all of a sudden, and and I agree, and, and it's tough. And those are the things that we've just got to work through. It's, so, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Well, and, that, and that's what I want to make sure people understand thank this. Thank you. This is not a quick fix. The The legislation that just went through is not trickling down to my desk yet. Well, so right. I cannot help, you know. And that's what I want and that's what I want to discuss on the other side of the break because look, they they passed legislate we're we're going to talk about that, but at the end of the day, this isn't something where it's going to be tomorrow. Listen, I appreciate UPC giving you to May 31st. Right. Last year these companies were like you got 4 uh, weeks. Right, exactly. Right. So the manic rewrites that we went through last summer are not the same, you know, thankfully. Right. They gave us four months to handle it instead of 30 days. Right. Coincidentally, so. right before June 1st when hurricane season starts. But I get it now. Look, I, I, I'm dialed into this stuff. And you know what's amazing to me and <clears throat> for all of y'all that are listening? And look, I have told you, I get interest rate. You want to chase interest rate, interest rate, interest rate. What you got to understand what we do is we get you with, we have a team here because it's not just about interest rate. And, you know, kudos to uh, the realtors I work with because they understand. We've had discussions. It's no longer about qualifying with interest rate. It's qualifying on what what is the insurance policy going to be for that house. And this is where when you work with some of these other lenders who don't know what they're doing or realtors who simply don't know what they're doing, or they're not good realtors, they're out, hey, making offers on homes and don't take the time to get with me so we could find out and they go make an offer on a home, it gets accepted and it's got a 20-year-old roof and the policy is $5,000, $6,000 on a $220,000 home. That's real numbers. That's re I know it is. So, that, so that's going to cost you a lot more than one-eighth that you're out trying to... So, what are you getting? And again, this is where it comes back to Mortgage Gumbo. This is why the Gumbo Nation's so big. This is why we book as many, if not more, loans than pretty much anybody, not just in the state, in the region. It's because people trust, and there's more than a number on a piece of paper. I get it. It's important. But at the end of the day, interest rate, you're going to qualify for the best rate that you qualify for, that your credit, that this, that, and the other. Right, it's like I got a guy telling me, "Well, I hope your underwriter can figure out my income, dude. You make what you make. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like simple like, math, correct? <laughs> you know, so you know, okay. But so my point is for for the listeners, understand. There's a lot more that goes into this than when people are going, "Hey, what's your interest rates right now? Hey, what what do you what's your homeowner's policy? Let's look at everything in a whole. Because at the end of the day. You buy bread milk with the money in your pocket. On the other side of the break, we're going to talk about some legislation that passed this week. I want to get Colette's thoughts on it. Um, to me, as a novice, I think, oh, this should be great. Right? Here's $45 million. Cool. How do I get some? You're listening to Mortgage Gumbo with Dwayne Steiner right here on iHeartRadio, 504-260-0995.
We'll get that question answered for you, Emil. It was on uh, on my agenda. All right. And they just hit me with the countdown. You know what up. Word. You know what up. Hold on. I got to send you a picture. Yeah. It's cuckoo crazy. I mean. Mm hmm. Hi, yesterday had an eight thousand dollar renewal from LA Citizens for a hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars of coverage. Yeah. And I did a split for him and got him to six. Is it great? No. It's terrible, but yeah. it's better than eight. You see what I mean? Yeah, I mean that's look. That's like people buying, I'm like yeah, I don't. I don't like quoting you this rate, but you see your picture. Oh uh, no! What happened? I think they. I think they thought you were still doing your live studio appearance. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Morning, man. Oh, how I miss going downtown. That's awesome. <laughs> this dude has been out there all morning. He's just sleeping in the middle of the road. Oh, dude, he's bedding down. Somebody's gonna roll over. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's that little alleyway behind, huh? Yeah, yeah. Check it out, people, on the stream. That's sexy, right? <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, you have. That's that's what I'm bringing tonight, right there. Well, the funny part is, yeah, okay. No, we're, back. we're back. You're listening to Mortgage Gumbo with Dwayne Stein right here on iHeartRadio. Hey, if you want to join the show, 504 260 Got the queen of insurance, Colette Biedenkopf, is in studio. Tonight, Mad Hatter's rides. Flow 26, Bayou Charters. Flow 26, sidewalk side. You don't want to miss me and Gavin. The G unit will be uh, rocking and rolling, having a good time. Super, super excited about that. Um, all right, so let's talk about, and right now I'm rocking my mask. And my Mad Hatter's hat on Facebook, and it's kind of going through the green screen because of the colors, but that's all right. You look good, and that's what matters on the show. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about this week, insurance. Um, it's an absolute nightmare right now. Um, so you got to be lucky. Hey, want to live in Louisiana, huh? How great. We got Mardi Gras, but add uh, super high interest rates and uh, insurance. I right. mean, talk about hitting a lottery, but... You know, we got crawfish and stuff like that. So let's talk about this week. Okay. So the okay. forty five million dollars. Right. To me, I go, Hey, we even had a question on Facebook. This is great, forty five million bucks, right? How awesome is this? I mean, my premium mm. should drop tomorrow. Explain what it is, okay. why it was passed, okay. and okay. what the hope is, but okay. then what the reality is. All right. It it, it is one BS. it is just one little smidge of an of assistance of it's like a band aid on a on a open wound that is still gushing blood. All right. Okay. So you're just stopping. So it's a headline. You're it's trying. Like, it's like the media saying mortgage rates. Like I see people. Putting I don't this think it's a headline. I don't okay. think it's a headline. Right. I Good. think it is. It is something that was the fastest way to do something. Okay. Okay. So because explain what that something is. Something had to be done quickly. All right. And that was the quickest thing that could be done quickly. All right. To incentivize the folks, meaning the companies that are still writing in the state, okay, to stay here. Uh, two is to incentivize some other carriers that are on the, on the bench, kind of waiting to see what's going on with the landscape here, yeah. okay, before they jump in. All right. But in order to impact what we are seeing now, the rates that we are seeing now, there are so many other things that need to be hashed out in legislation, 
okay, before it's going to get better. One of the things that I touched on was penalizing the carriers on supplemental estimates. Who is going to want to come do business here? Right. Okay. Right. It's you have to make it um, friendly for them to be able to fairly compete. Okay. Why does it cost double to settle a property claim in Louisiana versus Mississippi? Why? There should be no reason why. Okay. A nail should cost the same in Mississippi than it does in Louisiana. Great point. Why? There are whys. They're laid out in the form of, you know, penalization, you know, uh, the fact that we have this rule that you, an insurer has to stay on the risk if they've been on the risk for three years. Okay. Well, what if you're, uh, what if you just don't take care of your house right and your house is just deteriorating but i can't non-renew you because the law says i have to insure you no right so i'm sitting here insuring a house that i'm set up to fail correct because you the homeowner is not maintaining the home so you're saying they're going into a gunfight with a knife and everybody's like uh, it doesn't matter and and really i guess when you think about it 45 million sounds good to me and you, me and you if somebody was to cut that me and you a personal a check in the bucket but when you're talking about bazillions of dollars and when these storms come through right 45 million ain't i mean that's not going to take it, care of i think the the thought process was to help the carriers that are going that are being um that have stuck it out charged the reinsurance high rates okay so they're having to pay these high premiums okay which then trickles down to us yeah as a consumer sure so the the money's there is just a band-aid in helping them get through these high high premiums that they're having to pay so that they don't continue to increase the rates on the consumer Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it is, like I said, a temporary yeah. stopgap, if you will. But there are so many other things that need to be fixed. For example, when your roof is put on, there's no permit pulled. Okay. There's no need to have a permit to put a roof on. Um, when you replace your electrical and plumbing, you have to pull a permit. Right. So it goes into this database so that everybody knows when you replace your old clay pipes. Yeah. Okay. That deteriorate. Right. You went in, put yeah. PVC. It's all new. There is a public record of you doing that to your ho uh, house yeah. or business. Whatever. And so what's happening is these insurance companies want the ability to validate when your roof was put on because they have no idea well, that's a great point nobody could tell if your roof is seven years old or five years old or hey, three. Especially, especially if you call home shine md dad <laughs> we'll come out there and clean that it'll roof make it look beautiful right. especially okay but it could, be, it could be 14 years old right I got. so there's no saying. way for them to determine so this is a public service announcement if you had your roof replaced in the last storms, in the last five years. Let somebody know. Hold on to your information. Gotcha. Use that to your advantage to show this is when I got it done. Do not lose it. If you go to sell your house, pass it on to the buyer because your buyer's going to need it. It's like an elevation certificate yeah. for flood. You need, you need the documents. Okay? Hold on to the documents because... They have no independent way to determine exactly when your roof was replaced. So can, is there talk about, because, I mean, to me, roofing is, uh, you know, we only got a quick two minutes here, but roofing is the highest, one of the highest expenses right now. Can we not pass something where they got to go and get that? I mean, is that on the book? That's another one of the talking points Good. of, Good. you know, trying to get some type of database to know when this stuff is replaced. Okay, and then maybe to require a roofer to have a license to put a roof on. Right, right. So you don't have folks coming in from everywhere that 
can put a hammer and nail. You right. Know. You got a truck and some shingles and a, and, and a hammer and, you're and good. a roofer. Exactly. So just, you know, beefing up that, let's legitimize that operation a little bit um, for everyone's benefit. Um, and more robust building standards because Florida's building standards for new construction you know, are greater and more robust than what we have here. Listen, she's the best. She's the queen of insurance. If you want to reach out to her, 985-951-2070. White Glove. White Glove Service is what her and her team, the queen, offer. So if you've got a question, find out. You don't have to deal with this alone. It stinks. We all know it. But we got to live with it for now. Till next week, Gumbo Nation, keep staying the pot.